648 in our Smart Star for Friday. Breaking updates as millions of people in the southeast, so many in Florida, are without power. Neighborhoods covered in feet of water after Hurricane Helene made landfall overnight. It did so as a Category 4 storm where emergency officials have already been sending out warnings for days that the storm surge that could get up to 20 feet high could cause major destruction and loss of life. Some folks have already unfortunately passed down there. Now other states in the southeast including Georgia and the Carolinas are also bracing for their own dangerous wind and rain. James, you are tracking that for us right now. Yeah. Uh, it looks like some of the worst of it is right there over Atlanta where my family is. Yes, uh, definitely going to push up through Georgia into the uh, Carolinas and eventually uh, we will see some rain out of it but not bad really at all in the grand scheme of things for us just an increase in clouds we avoid the rain today numbers in the lower 70s and you'll notice the clouds getting thicker but right now it's sunny out there and then by the weekend there's those scattered showers we'll do the eight day forecast coming up at the end of the show Brennan Michaela that will be in a few minutes thank you James to our headlines here locally new this morning a 37 year old man from Greece is in critical condition after a crash in Rochester it happened at Lake Avenue and Maplewood Park just before 6 p.m. RPD says the man on this motorcycle was speeding down Lake when he collided with an SUV that was trying to make a turn that victim on the bike was taken to the hospital no one else was hurt Rochester Mayor Malik Evans and the police chief say that there are efforts currently underway to decrease gun violence. They are working, but there are more restrictions on the way. Although shootings have dropped back to pre-pandemic levels, the city remains in a gun violence state of emergency. The mayor says the declaration will allow RPD to increase officers and security in the East Avenue and Alexander Entertainment District. The area, in fact, will be restricted to anyone, uh, only those 21 and older this weekend. Over the past five years, shootings have gone down from 225 per year to 150 per year. More info on what the increased presence will look like on the East End that's expected to be announced later today. Elsewhere, city leaders here want to apply for $10 million again in state funding to keep up their plans to revitalize downtown. First, though, they want the input from you, the business owners, those who are interested in sharing what growth they want to see in the Four Corners neighborhood. That does encompass West Broad Street, the Genesee River, the Interloop North, and North Fitzhugh Street. Well, in 2022, the city received a downtown revitalization initiative grant where $10 million went towards improving the east side of the river. And last night, Bill Building owners, employers, residents, they were all able to come and share with the city the improvements they'd like to see. If City Council authorizes the submission, the city will submit its application to the state. They'll find out if they got any of the money come springtime. Applications for business owners and developers to request that funding would then open next summer. Sunrise traffic here, eight minutes to go until seven o'clock. Crash just reported moments ago in Henrietta at West Henrietta Road and Summit Point Drive. Elsewhere, 490 moving along just fine, crossing the river. A nice, beautiful start there on this Friday. Your forecast for the weekend coming up momentarily. Some new info this morning. We have a story about giving folks their confidence back all through the medicine of the dental chair. Yeah, how about going to the dentist? Liking that. Yeah. Well, Ron Spitzer heard from the doctor and the patient whose life, he says, was transformed with this smile. She's here in studio. Aran. Yeah, guys, Jim LaCicero is a patient for a local dentist. He's turning 73 in October. In 2018, LaCicero had a procedure that was started here after struggling with his teeth since he was a kid. It started with fillings when he was young, moved on to more cavities as a teen, and by the time he was 30, he had 12 crowns. As he got even older, the crowns began to loosen, so now he needed a crown with a post. Eventually, his teeth got brittle and started to crack. He worked at Wegmans traveling to find food for the chain and he did a lot of public speaking which he was embarrassed about because he was scared a crown would pop out mid presentation. LaCicero says some people remember Christmas growing up, some remember Halloween. He remembers his dentist. Now that's Dr. Frank Lamar, the founder and CEO of Hybridge Dental. The Hybridge procedure is a way to replace natural teeth with titanium dental implants. I went through life talking like this because I was afraid somebody would see a tooth missing. You know, I never s laughed. I was like, <laughs> you know, I was afraid to open my mouth. I'd go to dinner and you'd look at the menu and say, well, it's soft, what's not sticky? You know, oh, please don't let it happen tonight. Uh, it's all gone. That, that whole dark cloud over your head, that whole pressure on your shoulders that you feel, that apprehension, it's gone. 
Now, Lissa Sura loves a good ribeye with potatoes and his teeth can handle the bite. As for the dentist, Lamar is now expanding his business with offices already in Brighton and soon Buffalo. Guys, back to you. Ron, thank you. Let's take everybody inside the huddle. The Bills are on a short week. We know after the win Monday night at home against the Jags getting ready Sunday night. Another primetime game on the road against the Ravens. And one thing you have to keep at the forefront of getting ready to take on Baltimore. Lamar Jackson, despite a slow start one and two for the Ravens, the QB ranks eighth in rushing yards across the whole NFL. 10th in passing yards, just over 700 this year. A two-time MVP took his team to a road win against the Cowboys last week, totaling nearly 90 yards on the ground himself with a rushing touchdown and 182 in the air with a passing TD. So far this year, the Bills' D has kept opponents to an average of 16 points a game, and they plan to try to find that success again against this dual-threat quarterback. He was just a guy, and... From then going on to the league, he's still been the guy and winning MVP and all the accolades he's accumulated over the years. Like, you know, you just got to, hey, it's one of them games. Like, you just got to go out there and just try your best and try to minimize, I guess. Honestly, it goes back to our fundamentals. So being able to play with our hands and just you, and kind of just not have the O-line grab on us because you, you want to be able to react when he tries to get out of the pocket, so you want to be able to chase him down. But you can't chase him down if dudes are grabbing on you. So it's really all about our fundamentals at the end of the day and how we execute our rush plan. We'll see it all Sunday night. Before that, catch more from Thad Brown, the rest of the sports crew, our gang, Sunday morning, 1130, Buffalo kickoff live right here on News 8. Yeah, really fun. watching that. That's going to be a fun time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always interesting when you're uh, practicing, uh, playing against the quarterback like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you tell the second team quarterback to just run around like crazy. <laughs> so we have to try to catch him. People do the same thing for Josh Allen yeah. every week. Exactly. You can do what you yeah. can. Yeah. When he slings the ball left and right, should be a, a good game there. Friday night football tonight should mm -hmm. be fantastic for you. Forecast looks good. We are dry. That's nice to say. I haven't been able to say that all week. Yeah. We've had rain Monday through Thursday. Today is the first dry day. Yes, we have showers both Saturday and Sunday because of the remnants of Helene as it passes on by just the very outer bands. All it is, though, is just a passing shower or two. Don't let it stop you from the uh, corn maze this weekend. There you no, go. they'll be packed. Thank you, James, and thank you for watching us here all week at Sunrise. We'll see you back here at 725. Have a wonderful day and weekend. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, X, and on our app for news and weather.